you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Gupta, for your kind uh, introduction. I am help, thankful to Dr. Bansi and his team for inviting me here as a replacement to Dr. Urvi. So, dear friends, uh, we all know that the burden of diabetes in India is huge. And similarly, when you look at the epidemiology of uh, hyperglycemia in pregnancy, similarly, you find a huge number of patients developing diabetes uh, or they are diabetic patients who are having pregnancy now. So hyperglycemia in pregnancy is used in our country. And uh, another important point is that now the pregnancies are delayed because girls are now going for studies and then marriages are late and then they go for their job, etc. So uh, pregnancies are going later and later and you find that as the age is increasing, hyperglycemia incidences are also increasing. But whenever we have diabetes in pregnancy, you have to differentiate whether it is a pre-existing diabetes and now the lady is pregnant or the diabetes was first time identified during pregnancy in this pregnancy, what we label as uh, gestational diabetes. So today I am going to discuss mainly the uh, pre-existing diabetes and now the lady is pregnant. So what are these pre-gestational diabetes point to consider and here you find that the pre-conceptional uh, counseling is very important, glucose control during pregnancy is very, very important, you have to manage labor in these patients and of course postpartum consideration. So it is very important message here that whenever you are dealing with any lady of uh, you can say pregnancy uh, uh, child bearing age, then uh, you have to uh, discuss this point out that if you are planning pregnancy then you should be uh, having a pre-pregnancy counseling because most of the time these ladies may be having so many other conditions and they may be on many of these oral antidiabetic drugs and we usually stop all these drugs and most of the time we shift the patient to a intensive insulin therapy Otherwise, these patients will have many problems. So preg pregnancy, even in a normal lady, is having a very diabetogenic, uh, you can say, profile. There is in insulin resistance, there is hyperinsulinemia, and in the starting of this uh, pregnancy in a normal person, you find that glucose profiles are going down because of hyperinsulinemia, but ultimately when the placenta is of good size, it starts producing large amount of placental hormones like HPL, cortisol, progesterone, etc. And these all are, uh, you can say, diabetogenic and they lead to increase in insulin resistance in these ladies. During pregnancy, as the pregnancy is continuing and progressing, you find that there is a exce excessive uh, anabolism during feeding and catabolism during fasting which are ex exacerbated and progressively in, uh, increasing and these are going till the delivery is uh, there. If you compare GDM to uh, pregnancy in a lady who is already diabetic, you find that right from the beginning of conception, there is a hyperglycemic burden there and organogenesis which is occurring in the first eight to 10 weeks of pregnancy is now affected as compared to GDM only where the uh, GDM is developing after in the second half of pregnancy and organogenesis has already taken place. So congenital malformations are not there in GDM as compared to a patient who is pre-existing diabetic and now pregnant. There are teratogenic processes in diabetic pregnancies like increased production of oxygen derived free radicals, abnormalities of myoinositol, arachidonic acid metabolism, abnormalities in the basement membrane components and zinc metabolism is abnormal. So here you can see that the early pregnancy, there is a organogenesis till uh, eight uh, weeks or so. And most of the time we see that organogenesis occurs early in the first trimester before the women first reports to antenatal cl clinic. So most of the time our patients are coming very late and by that time, they may be having uncontrolled hyperglycemia, but here important point is that because of this huge burden of diabetes and hyperglycemia, they may have organogenesis defectiveness, that is teratogenesis or congenital malformation. So uncontrolled diabetes during the stage increases the risk of major congenital 
malformation. These are some of the examples of malformation like caudal regression syndrome, spina bifida, uh, neural defects, cardiovascular defects, and renal agenesis, etc. Caudal regression syndrome is the most specific abnormality what we see in our diabetic patients. And here, important point is that as the HV1C is rising, you find that the structural or teratogenic abnormalities are continuously rising. So if the lady is having a HV1C of something like 10%, the chances of congenital malformation may be to the tune of 10 to 15% or higher. So indicating that before the pregnancy, if the lady is going for a tighter control, then probably she is going to have a very good, you can say, outcome. So why all these things are happening? Because many of these, uh, you can say, products are transferred across the placenta, like glucose, amino acid, ketones, and triglycerides are transported across the placenta going to the fetus. But insulin and glucagon are not transferring across the placenta. So once the uh, patient is having hyperglycemia, mother is having hyperglycemia, there is because of decrease in insulin and high glucose and other, uh, you can say, amino acids and lipids transfer to the fetus and these leads to increase in insulin secretion from the fetal pancreas. So fetal pancreas is now ready after 10 weeks of pregnancy. So you find that after 10 weeks of fetal life, the pancreas start producing insulin and then in the presence of high amount of inflow from the mother, you will have huge amount of growth, increased growth, which leads to uh, macrosomia in this fetus. So effect of this fetal hyperinsulinemia because of excess amount of glucose transfer to the fetus will lead to increased growth of insulin sensitive tissues. You have accelerated skeletal maturation. You have increased hepatic glycogen deposition, delayed pulmonary maturation, and delayed switch from the fetal hemoglobin to uh, adult hemoglobin. And all these things are important because in this type of scenario, there are more of stillbirth, neonatal hypoglycemia. Once the uh, fetus is delivered and sugar profiles are not controlled, fetus is having high insulin level and suddenly the supply line from the mother is stopped. Now fetus is having high chances of developing hypoglycemia. And of course, if the fetus is having continuous good supply of nutrient and with hyperinsulinemia, you, the fetus will have uh, fetal macrosomia. So you, you know these fetal macrosomic features like fat shoulders, short neck, big cheeks, red skin, etc. And the effect of this uh, on dieptic, uh, you can say ba babies who are on mother, of mothers are dieptic, maternal insulin does not cross the placenta, but fetal insulin production begins at 8 to 10 weeks. High maternal blood glucose, high fetal blood glucose, high fetal insulin levels ultimately lead to macrosomia. And insulin is a very important anabolic hormone. It's a very potent growth hormone type substance. So effect of this uh, uncontrolled hyperglycemia on neonate. So there will be hypoglycemia after the delivery, respiratory distress syndrome, hyperbilirubinemia, hypocalcemia, polycythemia, traumatic delivery because of large size of the fetus, and many more. So you find that there are maternal implications and fetal implications if the patient is, if the mother is not well controlled as regards glucose profiles is concerned. In addition to that, there are vascular complications, infections, etc. And in long term, fetal outcome, if you see after these uh, offsprings are, uh, you can say after a few years, they will be having obesity, hyperinsulinemia, and there is increased chances of developing hyperglycemia in these patients also, in these uh, offsprings of uh, mother with diabetes. In the mother, if the patient is having high, long duration of diabetes, she may be having retinopathy, nephropathy, and other cardiovascular, macrovascular complications, which may all deteriorate if the patient is having uh, uncontrolled hyperglycemia during pregnancy. So pregnancy deteriorates most of these complications. And we have to look into the contraindications to pregnancy in this type of diabetic patients, where there is significant ischemic heart disease, there is a proliferative retinopathy, uh, significant reduction in estimated GFR, severe gastroparesis, and uncontrolled diabetes with HV1C of more than 10% or so. So ultimately, the uh, uh, last, you can say, effort is good control of glucose level in the mother can significantly reduce the adverse 
uh, pregnancy outcome in our diabetic patients. And this is one of the most important cornerstone of modern diabetes in pregnancy management. So management lines are like pre-pregnancy counseling and controlling uh, hyperglycemia during pregnancy. And of course, post-pregnancy control is also required. Pre-conceptional uh, care is very, very important because we have to discuss the timeline for the pregnancy. So pregnancy should be planned pregnancies, lifestyle advices, folic acid supplementation, appropriate contraceptive advices so that you can time the pregnancy and full medical medicational review. Many of these patients may be having hypertension on ACE or ARBs, which has to be stopped during pregnancy. They may be on statin. Statin has to be stopped during pregnancy. And you have to supplement folic acid. Look at the thyroid profile of these patients also. And you have to look at sugar profile of these uh, patients also. And with that, educate the patients and the partner. Cell monitoring of blood glucose, which is very, very important during pregnancy, it has to be uh, emphasized. And good control is to be emphasized just before pregnancy. If the HbA1c is less than 6.5, the chances of good pregnancy outcome will be there. Access uh, regarding uh, fundal examination and serum creatinine. Uh, and most of the time, we switch the patient to insulin even before pregnancy, uh, start of pregnancy. So most of the time, once we have preconceptional counseling, we shift the patient to a intensive insulin therapy and basal bolus therapy is considered to be the best there. And in this initial evaluation of pregnant women with diabetes, now the patient is diabetic, the patient has to have self monitoring of uh, blood glucose, adjust insulin regimens according to the sugar profile, check for uh, diet, exercise, and HV1C, and what are the targets which we should be achieving, a fasting of less than 95, a one hour of less than 140, and two hour of um, less than 120 milligram, and low dose aspirin in many of these patients after 12 weeks of uh, gestation is recommended. There are many things which we have to look at uh, first trimester, like uh, very important is menstrual history to date the pregnancy, blood pressure recording, weight measurements, optimal glycemic control, HbA1c, retinal examination, renal function, and counseling for the risk of congenital malformation, and ultrasound for fetal viability and dating and anomalies. Similarly, in second trimester, we'll be looking in most of these things again, and we are now is the time for checking for preeclampsia, polyhydroamnios, urinary tract infection, etc. in these patients, in addition to all those things which we are doing in the first trimester. And again, in third trimester, you are going for echo of these fetus to look at congenital malformation also, in addition to all those things. So fetal surveillance is very, very important in these patients. And here you have at 11 to 14 weeks, a early scan is required. Then 18 to 20 weeks, again, a detailed structural anatomical scan is required. And then, of course, 28 to 36 weeks, a serial growth scans are required in these patients. And in late pregnancy, if additional complications are present, non-stress uh, testing or modified biophysical profile are to be looked into in this type of patients. Patient may require early termination of pregnancy. And here you have to look at maturation of the lung. And here people are giving betamethasone, and we know that betamethasone will lead to increase in hyperglycemia. So whenever these steroids are given for next three days or four days, you have to give additional insulin doses to cover the hyperglycemia caused by uh, these uh, steroids. We have to have a dietary modification, exercise planning, targets are given to us which are very tight. Insulin is the therapy of choice as we discussed. There are so many pros and cons of either metformin and glibenclamide. So we usually prefer uh, insulin therapy in our pre-existing type 2 diabetic patient now pregnant. So insulin is given as a, an intensified therapy that is basal bolus therapy is considered to be the best role of continuous subcutaneous insulin infusion with the help of a insulin pump is now gaining popularity there are many advantages tighter blood control uh, blood glucose control will be there but there are some minor disadvantages also therapy oral therapy we just discussed in the last 
important point about the timing of delivery is that if you are delivering too early, then respiratory distress syndrome and prematurity is the problem. If you are going for late uh, delivery, then probably stillbirth, what we say late intrauterine uh, demise of the fetus and macrosomia are the concerns. So timing of uh, delivery is very, very important. If the patient is well controlled on very little amount of insulin and you find that throughout the pregnancy things are okay, then usually we say that 38 to 40 weeks of, uh, weeks of pregnancy, it is okay. But anything which is happening, which is bad for the fetus, then probably we go for a delivery at 38 weeks. So vaginal deliveries can be done in this type of patient. Uh, caesarean sections are only required according to the obstetric, uh, you can say, point of view, rather than that every uh, lady who is diabetic and undergoing a caesarean section. Intrapartum consideration again, because we want, just one minute, we want tighter control during labor also, because if the blood glucose are very high, fetal blood glucose will be high, and fetal insulin level will be high, and just after the delivery, uh, neonate will develop severe hypoglycemia. So we have to have tighter control. Neonatal care is again very, very important, and particularly hypoglycemia are to be prevented in this new newborn that important point uh, which is very important point so key messages are that diabetes uh, in a, is a major medical complication of pregnancy and diabetes in pregnancy is associated with risk of mother and to the developing fetus diabetes complication complicating pregnancy is more common in india because uh, age of onset of diabetes is younger and the now the, uh, the pregnancies are occurring at a later age and over diabetes in pregnancy should be managed as pre-existing diabetes Preconceptional care is required, supplement of folic acid, just uh, last few lines. Pregnant women uh, should, uh, management of medical nutrition therapy should be individualized and we should have tighter options, very good control and ultimately these pre-pregnancy uh, pre diabetic patients have so many other complications to be looked into and ultimately women with pre-existing diabetes should have ultrasound scans frequently required and timing and mode of delivery in pre-existing diabetes are very, very important pointers to be considered. Thank you very much.